Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, uh, today's topic is about maintaining ties with kinship. It's saddening that there are many people who sever ties with their uh, kinfolks, and uh, this is a, a very bad practice. Uh, maintaining ties with kinship is one of the greatest gates to Jannah, and it is one of the best deeds by means of which the slave draws near to Allah uh, after fulfilling faith in Allah uh, Allah says uh, in the Quran wa bihi Worship Allah and do not associate anything with him وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And to parents be kind وَبِذِي الْقُرْبَى And towards kinfolks. Uh, there is no doubt that maintaining ties with kinfolks and with anyone in general is a means of increasing uh, love and strengthening the bond of that relationship. Uh, but one of the beautiful things about maintaining ties with kinship is that it is a means to enter Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ said in a part of a long hadith, he said, maintain ties with kinship, you would enter Jannah peacefully. Not just enter Jannah, no, enter it peacefully. And one of the uh, greatest rewards a person who maintains, continuously maintains ties with kinship is that Allah Azza wa Jal makes that a means of the following. The Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever would like that Allah Azza wa Jal increases his provision and prolongs his life, let him maintain ties with kinship. The opposite of that is breaking the ties not being in touch with kinship. This is one of the major sins for which Allah has prepared two punishments, one in this life and then one in the hereafter. The Prophet wasallam said, there is no sin more deserving that Allah would hasten his punishment on the slave. In this life, in addition to what he has for him in the hereafter than severing ties with kinship and oppressing people. Now in the hereafter, the Prophet ﷺ said, no one who sever ties with kinship would enter Jannah. Do we realize the seriousness of this? Do we know how important it is to maintain kinship to enter Jannah and to avoid entering hell, we have to maintain ties with kinship. Uh, Ali ibn al-Hussein was advising his son once and said, son, never be friend or be in the company of someone who severs ties with kinship, who does not maintain ties with his kinfolks. Because I read in the Quran that he is cursed. That's serious. Some people might say, well, I'm trying, but I don't find a positive reaction in return. I'm being kind, I'm maintaining ties, but they don't care. They don't call me back, they don't text me back, they don't email me back, they don't visit me when I visit them. Well, we don't do it to be one for one, you know, uh, we're not trying to settle an account, oh, they visited me, I'll visit, he called me, I'll call him, she called me, I'll call, he texted me, I'll do the same. No. The Prophet ﷺ said, maintaining ties with kinship is not when you are kind, only when they're kind to you, but rather, he is the one who maintains ties when the others sever ties with him. That's when you're considered the person who's maintaining ties. It's not just to break even, no. It's when they don't, you do. Because you're fulfilling your obligation 
and they're not. So you cannot refrain from fulfilling an obligation because others are not fulfilling theirs. Now, this becomes more confirmed in this month, in the month of mercy, month of love, month of forgiveness, month of compassion. How can you go into Ramadan and through Ramadan and after Ramadan? And how can you do that when your relationship with the closest people to you is bad? Or there is no relationship. How can you? It just doesn't coincide with the spirit of Ramadan. So we must check on our relatives, our kinfolks. And we must, especially those who are in need of them, give them charity. They're more deserving than anybody else. The Prophet ﷺ said, spending charity on a needy person is recorded as charity. You're, re you're rewarded as someone who spent charity. Optional money. But spending it on kinship is considered as charity as well as maintaining ties with kinfolks. And the most deserving of all relatives to you are your parents and then the relationships, the closest and then so on and so forth. So it's an opportunity. We are on a month during which the souls are calm and tranquil, submissive to Allah, adhering to His commands. So let's take advantage of this opportunity and reach out to those whom we haven't spoken to or communicated with for a while, short or long. Let's act upon the spirit of Ramadan. Let's take advantage and open that gate of Jannah and enter it before Ramadan ends and it becomes more difficult. Assalamu alaikum.